Hi, I'm Brooke Haycock and this is In The Field with Jamie Hall. Hello and welcome to episode three of In The Field. The plan for this project was always to explore different areas of photography, size, shapes and diversity of wildlife, and the photographers who are out there capturing those images. We did plan a couple of longer lens days last year, but unfortunately due to some pretty standard British weather, we had to abandon those due to severe warnings. Thankfully we're able to reschedule, and this is one of those episodes. Today I'm joined by Brooke Haycock, a fantastic young photographer from East Sussex who's been a huge inspiration for me over the last year. Brooke's dedication and passion for wildlife is viewable in his stories, on his pictures and his captions and it's really quite infectious. I'm definitely a little bit jealous that I didn't get into photography a bit earlier because at 14 he's already producing work far better than probably what I'm going to be able to do uh, in my life. <laughs> We talk about some of the gear that he uses, some of the different techniques that he uses to get close to wildlife and get some of these images, and some of the encounters that he's had over the last year. It's really great to see some young people getting into photography, and I was really happy to share this day with him. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to episode three of In The Field. This time I am joined by Brooke Haycock, a brilliant young photographer. We're here in East Sussex and the first thing we're going to talk about, uh, as always, is our gear. Um, so Brooke, tell me what uh, gear you've got today. Well, today I'm using the R6 and the Sigma 60-600mm to lens. So it's really versatile because you can get close to your subjects as well as if they come close to you, you can zoom out nicely. So that's why I like this lens. Nice. So um, opposite to the one that I've got, so I've got the 150-600, which is sort of their most popular one. And this is kind of a little bit of an upgrade on that um, real nice sharpness yeah. on that lens as well, yeah. Yeah. And before that, you used to have the DSLR and you've just recently gone to mirrorless. Yeah, so I had the 7D Mark II. Now I've gone to mirrorless because I just think in low light it's a lot better and it's a lot lighter. So I think it's just a bit more useful in the field. The thing that is not so light, or I guess it is, but quite bulky, is your tripod. You've got a bit of a, a monster there. Yeah, so this one, it's funny because it's actually getting a bit old now because it's been in the mud and all that, so it's faced all the weather, but hopefully it stays strong. Because often I uh, wear like a strap if I'm walking around, just I find it a bit more mobile. Yeah. But you do quite a lot of sitting in one place and scoping yeah. stuff out, so it's a bit more like you to have this tripod mm. eh? yeah well i know lots of people there for that so as you say strap but i just think it's really heavy i don't want to be holding it the whole time so i'll just lug this around when i get to a spot stay there maybe get some camouflage and yeah that sort of thing cool so looking at a few different things today the first thing we're going to try and check out uh, is some owls so let's go and do that yeah So one of the things that um, Brooke has here is um, a tawny owl, uh, which he does quite a bit of surveillance on. And we've obviously got a crew of a few people, so we don't want to disturb it. So just me and Brooke are going to get a little bit closer and see if we can't see it roosting up in the tree. So the thing's about, it's just about not stepping really loudly and stepping on branches, which could 
disturb the owl. Yeah, so a lot of what you do is sneaking around, hey? Yeah. So when, when you're looking for these owls, yeah. what, what sort of things are you looking out for when you're uh, trying to find well, out where they are? Birds alarming is the biggest one for me. But I've known this owl has been here for quite a long time because just all the birds alarming every evening and it's near the box which they nested in last year. Oh, okay, so I see a bit of reflection there because they have beautiful feathers. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay, I think we got it. I'm not 100% sure about that. Just a bit of brown really triggers you. I've just felt... I mean, Brooke's eyes are ridiculous because <laughs> to me it just looks like a little yeah, tree. Yeah, I think we got it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see it, I can see it. Can see it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's pull the screen out. It's obviously super hard to see on this. Yeah, definitely, um, very hard. And a lot of people say how you spot them. But the thing is, I think it's just about looking at that small bits of reflection from the light. That's why when it's the sun, it's a good time to spot them. You just see that white bit on their feathers. So one of the things that I really admire about Brooke and one of the reasons I want to do this episode is, is just for his field craft. Um, the owl's not too far away from us now, but we don't really want all of us sort of descending on it and disturbing it. So I've let him just sort of go ahead a bit and take a bit of footage. And we we can see it just from our long lens here. Um, and it does look really nice. And I know that Brooke will get some really good footage for us to watch as well. Alright, I'm going to do some quick fire questions for you, Brooke, yeah. okay? Um, so the first one is your favourite subject. Favourite subject, I'm going to have to say goshawk. It was tawny owl, but oh, yeah. goshawk has now pipped it. Nice, well you've recently found a goshawk, which we'll talk about later, but that's yeah. very interesting. Favourite image of your own? Uh, it's going to have to be the one I took last summer with a tawny owl with a frog. That was just magical. That's my favourite image of yours as well. Yeah. Um, favourite animal that isn't an owl? Uh, maybe something like a stoat or a weasel. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I'd love to um, get more photos of them because I've only got really distant ones, so that's something I'd love to work on. And then there's otters. Oh, you've seen otters before, though? Yeah, and moles. That was fantastic. Nice. Um, what's the hardest thing that you find to shoot? Hardest thing? Oh, that's a good question because... I'd probably badgers. Yeah? Have you got many yeah. photos of badgers? Um, no, I haven't got any photos because I feel like you need to put a lot of time into them and I'm um, with the tawnies in the woods, so it's quite hard to do both. Have you got sets around here? Or? Yeah, quite a lot, yeah? but they just never come out in daylight. I've tried trail cameras, but no luck so far. Okay, cool. And last one, um, have you got a sort of favourite photographer, either someone on Instagram or yeah. someone famous, something like that? I don't have one favourite because I feel like everyone has their different type of photography. So there's lots of people on Instagram who are inspiring like yourself. So <laughs> it's kind. pretty much everyone in that community. Oh, cool, nice one. So uh, I'm going to check out a fox den? Yeah, so that's the plan. So last year, when I was photographing tawny owls, I heard some rustling in the leaves and 10 fox cubs just were running up the hill. So I'm no hoping way. they'll still be here. So yeah, I'm going to put the trail cam out and see what we get. All right, let's do it. So here was one of the entrances last year, but it doesn't seem to be using it this year. So it could be in the bush just there. 
So there's loads of different things that you can use to try and track down wildlife. Uh, one of the things that I use, and this Brooks also brought along today, is a trail cam. Uh, reasonably inexpensive. You can get these for like 30, 40 quid, something yeah, like that yeah. Amazon. Yeah, even cheaper, 20. And they come with different things, so you can sort of strap them around to a tree. Brooks got a little tripod that it uses. So when we're in this area where this, this fox den that was used last year, um, Brooks obviously not, not seen anything today, but we can lay this down and try and get some footage. We yeah. can try and get them coming across some of the area. If we think a hole is active, we can put that uh, over the hole and um, see what we can do. So yeah. you're going to put this up today, yeah? Yeah, so I know the foxes are in the area, so this will just help to see where and if they're back in the same spot. And what we'll do is we'll see if we get anything and uh, if Brooke gets a bit of trail cam footage from foxes, then we'll stick it in here. If he doesn't, then there won't be. Yeah. <laughs> So we're in this lovely field where Brooke gets a few of his barn owl shots and videos. And I want to show another bit of kit that he uses that I really would love myself. And that's uh, what they call a bag hide, or do you call it a pop-up hide as well? Uh, no, I call it a bag hide. Okay, cool. Of it's a great piece of equipment because it's really practical and light and you can just, comes out and I get in it like this, put it over like that. And then I just stick my camera through the small hole just here and can come down like that. And you just stay standing up like that? Yeah, that's it. Um, stay like that. And it's only a little bit of camo, but it does help. A lot. A lot more camera when the sun's not directly on you as well. Yeah, that's true. And when a barn owl comes over, because barn owls, they don't have amazing eyesight, or when they're in flight, they're not too fast about um, just people. So I'm like that. It doesn't really notice me, and it can just fly straight over. And I've got footage of the barn owl coming so close, almost perching on the camera. <laughs> And how long will you spend sort of sat in that? Uh, well, um, to get a bit of footage of the barn out, I spent two weeks consistently coming out at the same time to get what I wanted. And yeah, I'd just wait here maybe an hour and a half before sunset. And some nights they wouldn't show and some they would. But you'll be in there for an hour or a couple of hours. Yeah, maybe, so. yeah, an hour well and a half, something like that. Nice, awesome. All right, a couple of questions for you then, Brooke. Um, Mike Phelps, uh, Phelps Photography X, yeah. asked you what sort of first inspired you to get into photography. Um, I think it was Autumn Watch, actually. I once uh, flicked on the channel and then I saw some really inspiring stuff on just garden birds. So I put out some feeders and just the birds that were coming were amazing, and then like woodpeckers and stuff like that. So then photography just really came with it. Awesome. I got a question from uh, Lewis Cartoonist, a bit of a serious question. Um, what do you think we can do um, to help protect wildlife? Um, I just really think a lot of people are doing their best to try and protect it. But I think we need the bigger people, like the government, to act for themselves. And then we need the high people who are really, really popular to act so others will too. Nice, from the top down, definitely. Mm. And then uh, a good friend of ours, Adam uh, Jukes, um, asked if you were given the opportunity to make a wildlife documentary focusing on any species anywhere in the world, what would you want to do? Well, yeah, that's a tricky question, that, because I haven't travelled to see, like, wolves and stuff like that, 
but I'm sure they'd be very interesting. So, yeah, probably wolves. Wolves? Yeah. In America? Yeah. Nice, nice. So the, the bar now you, uh, you see quite a lot. You've known him oh, for yeah. quite a while, hey? Yeah, I've known it for nearly four years now. Oh, right. Um, yeah, so it's quite incredible. And that bar now really actually got me very interested into wildlife in a sort of different way than I had been before. So that day, I thought the habitat was really good uh, down here. So I came one morning with my mum and I saw this barn owl hovering right above our heads. And I just couldn't believe it that this owl was actually where I live. And that was a really amazing moment. Nice. So further that day, I went for five more walks because I was just so inspired and happy. And then for a few months after that, I just couldn't go without a day of seeing the owl because it was so amazing and actually made me cry quite a lot of its and beauty. This is four years ago? Yeah. So you were about 10 or 11 years old? Uh, yeah, around that. Crazy. So it's amazing. we were hoping to see today uh, nice and rare is an albino squirrel which Brooke got a couple of shots off in the last couple of weeks yeah um, I think it's a, a good example of getting to know of, of why it's good to know your locals because yeah pretty, we've walked around and everyone knows Brooke and been speaking to him yeah and it was them that told you about this eh? yeah so it's the local uh, dog walkers and also a couple of photographers who told me about this awesome albino squirrel it's just high up in the tree there. Seems to be having a little squirrel prune. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna wait here and hopefully we can get some cool footage. Another challenging day with light, um, but we got to see loads of uh, the different things that Brooke does. And we've still got the squirrel uh, roaming around us. We've had about half an hour with this lovely squirrel. So thank you very much, Brooke. Yeah, pleasure to meet you again. No, really appreciate you showing us around your patch. Um, check out some of Brooke's work. Um, he's got some amazing stuff from around here, but also all over the country. And uh, thanks for tuning in and see you again next time. <laughs>